The magic of walking into a monarch site and seeing what you first think are these kind of dead leaves on a tree, and you suddenly realize you're looking at hundreds or thousands of butterflies. I think they're actually the epitome of beauty to a lot of people. I'm Stu Weiss, I'm a conservation ecologist. I've been working on California monarch butterflies since 1990. We're at Point Lobo State Reserve south of Carmel visiting an overwintering monarch butterfly site. They come to sites like this right on the California coast to find a very mild climate where it's not too cold and they don't freeze and also it's not so warm that they're active all the time and they burn up their fat reserves. Because the whole idea of overwintering is to just really hunker down and conserve your fat reserves that you brought with you from the migration. A couple of things to notice about this site is it's a very open amphitheater, very open to the south. It provides a wind shelter, a mixed light environment with some very open areas and very closed areas and areas of intermediate dappled light in between. And it's very close to the ocean so that even on the coldest days, it rarely freezes here. They form these pretty tight clusters they're very comfortable being right up next to each other. Monarch butterflies and other insects don't produce their own body heat except by a very expensive process of shivering. Sometimes they'll end up on the ground. Um, they'll get knocked off by the wind, they'll be too cold. You'll see them on the ground kind of shivering to try to raise their muscle temperature so they can fly. If they just bask in the sunlight, they warm up their bodies and their flight muscles work. These monarchs that are here overwintering were actually born in the mountain ranges from here to the Rocky Mountains up into British Columbia. In late August, early September, the days are rapidly getting shorter and that triggers the migration. They fly from all over the western United States. They find the California coast and they start finding these groves of trees where we get that right mix of microclimate conditions that will sustain them through storms and through the winter season. So we're here in Monarch Grove Sanctuary in Pacific Grove. Here, because somebody in the past planted this L-shaped grove of eucalyptus, it created the right microclimate conditions for the monarchs. So I use a technique called hemispherical photography to analyze the forest canopy structure here. The basic idea is we're taking a photograph pointed straight up, hence the gimbals to keep it level, and then I orient with the compass so I know where north is. And this snaps a 180 degree field of view picture so you get the entire sky. And the first thing we do is get the photograph aligned. We differentiate the sky from the foliage and the other obstructions. Then we superimpose the path of the sun as it changes hour by hour and month by month through the year. And we can calculate how much direct light is getting into a site. Very important determinant of microclimate. So we took the results of the fisheye photography and we've made recommendations to plant this second row of eucalyptus to reinforce this southern boundary. The idea is that we want to create that kind of amphitheater-like habitat that has the wind shelter but also has the right light environment so the monarch can always find those good spots. So this is one of the very last spots in the city of Pacific Grove, which used to be covered with a pine forest where the monarch butterflies still find that right set of microclimate conditions. That's the way it is across most sites in California. It's non-native eucalyptus that are now providing the habitat for the monarch. So it kind of breaks down some of those barriers in conservation, you know, ideas of native always good, non-native always bad. Because this site has about two and a half acres of habitat. We need to learn how to manage these trees over decades to maintain the right microclimate.
Everybody I know, everybody I watch at these sites walks in, they get that same kind of smile on their face. So we just get this real joy from being in these monarch habitats. There's very few places where that happens. They're very, very precious. Yeah.